Oh, hello there. I didn't see you there. I apologize to my beautiful audience there at home. Welcome to Honey, What Are the Kids Thinking? This is episode two. Yes, folks, we made it from episode one to episode two without getting our show cut. And this time we'll be talking about teaching ourselves. I brought with me a guest today, a very good friend of mine. We've known each other for a long time. Her name is Brianna Bailey. You can introduce yourself. Hello, everyone. I'm. You can call me Bree. It's much easier that way. Yep. Um, today, we'll be talking about all of the things that goes on with our youth growing up, um, learning, school, uh, and all of the parts of our lives where we need to teach ourselves how to get through them. Um, we'll be talking about a lot of different things. But before we get into that, I have to go to our favorite subject of the day is meme of the day. So camera four, take it away. Hello, camera four. Memes, as I mentioned in the first episode, are very sporadic. They change from one week to the next. And I will be talking to you today about a particular concept about meme that is very important to understand. And that is that they build on each other. If you remember from last week, I showed you what was known as the E meme, if we could bring that up right there. There we go. The E-meme, for those of you that are just now tuning in and seeing this for the first time, uh, is, a show, is a meme or an image that was put together out of sheer unadulterated stupidity. The punchline of the entire joke was that this image right here makes absolutely no sense whatsoever. However, last week or the week before, very recently, uh, the new Pixar animated film Buzz Lightyear was shown in the trailer. For those of you who have not seen that trailer, we'll show the new Buzz Lightyear here, uh, was just revealed. And he looks very, very similar to the very broad chinned face of the person that was shown in the E-meme. This is Buzz Lightyear as he was shown in the trailer. Uh, yes, folks, that is the 3D Buzz Lightyear. It is just as cursed as everyone else thought it was. And because he looks so similar, the E-meme has now since evolved into what we call the B-meme. And we'll pull that up the second uh, we can. Uh, that, ladies and gentlemen, is what the new meme has been dubbed, the B-meme. And it took all over uh, social media. And the very person whose face was photoshopped, even replied to some of the messages asking for them to stop in a joking manner, uh, very sarcastically. It was very funny to everyone, uh, as I'm sure it may or may not be funny to you. I hope it is. Um, but he then wound up with this all over his social media and everyone was talking to him about it. Uh, so that'll be enough for meme of the day. It's important to remember that they build upon each other. If you missed the E-meme would not be able to understand the importance and the relevance of the B-meme in our culture. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the meme of the day. Back to camera four. Sorry, three. I apologize to you, camera three. I had misnamed you. Now, Brianna, yes. Bree, thank you for coming in today. Thank you for having uh, me. Tell us a little bit about yourself. You study now at the University of Miami, correct? Yes. I'm currently at the University of Miami studying... Uh, biomedical sciences. I'm getting my master's. I just recently graduated with um, my bachelor's in the same thing. And yeah, I should be done in the end of May. So looking forward to being done with that. That's but. that's some pretty incredible stuff. And, yeah. and do you have any plans for afterwards, what you're going to do after? Um, I'm hoping to pursue an MDJD, which is uh, a combination degree in uh, both medicine and uh, law. So I would have my... Uh, medical doctorate and my Juris doctorate. So yes, a little bit crazy, yeah, but um, that is the plan. Uh, a lot of steps to get there, but I'm hoping I get yeah, there eventually. It, it, imagine, imagine combining medical school, medical school with law school. I can tell you with absolute positively uh, that I could do neither because that is not That's what... not true. I'm sure you could, <laughs> you could do it. Um, well, in the prep for the show, ladies and gentlemen, this debate did come up and I wanted to put it at the very, very forefront because this is an important question. And if you are watching this, please put it into the comments. We need to hear your input. Uh, can cheese go with everything? I say 
The cheese cannot. Cannot put cheese with everything. But Brianna Bailey here thinks differently. I would like to argue that cheese could be put on practically everything. Um, it was brought up right before the show uh, that cereal is out there. And I don't know. I, I don't know. That stumped me. But I would like to argue that you could do it. I'm not saying you should put cheese on everything. Um, you mentioned ice cream. Although I would argue that cheesecake is made with cream cheese. It's it's not. And it's that is not cheese. It, it yes. I'm saying you could put you you could cheese on anything. I'm not saying you should. I'm not saying that it would taste good. I don't know. Maybe it will. You never know. You never know. <laughs> Maybe you try cheddar cheese on Cheerios one time and your life has changed. Well, well, here's the question. Can like because you said you can't put cheese in cereal, but but it technically spinach dip is a bowl of cheese with with spinach put in it i don't think you can count <laughs> but that as that's a cereal. not a that's cereal though yeah. <laughs> that's more of a soup it's not even it's a dip it's a it dip. is it is i appreciate the effort though to take my side at least. i i try to i try to to lend you a little bit more credence there but ladies yeah. and gentlemen we all know at home that i was the one that won this debate for the record i highly i disagree <laughs> <laughs> I disagree. Let us know in the comments if you think that cheese can go on anything or or if you, if you, or if you have anything that you eat with cheese on it that people typically don't eat with cheese on it. That would be interesting to know. I'd like yeah. to see what people put. I'd like to know if someone does put cheese on their cereal. Um, I doubt that anyone does. There's, there's but always like going to be know. one weirdo. I'd like to know. There's always yeah. going to be one weirdo. Um, that said, it is safe to say that there are a lot of expectations that people have for cheese yes, and for where cheese. it should go. <laughs> uh, and and in, in no way whatsoever tying it into the topic of today, uh, there are also a lot of expectations that people have of us. Yes. We are the new generation. Yes. Uh, you are studying to be a, you, I think you mentioned forensic. I'd uh, like to be a forensic psychiatrist, which is... A little bit complicated which is why i'd like to get my juris doctor on top of my medical doctor because i think it's interesting information to have also um just being an overall expert in that area would be good um it would be possible without getting my juris doctorate for those of you who know that but um oh and we have someone saying cotton candy yeah our producer no doesn't think cotton no candy cheese, cheese on cotton can, candy can go together um anyway <laughs> it's a little sidetracked hmm. <laughs> i but um yes you can be a forensic psychiatrist without your juris doctor but i feel like it's good to contextualize it and it's only an extra two years which a lot of people disagree that two years is only two years uh, but i think in the grand scheme of things it's good to have extra experience i feel like that extra education is worth it but people disagree <laughs> my, my personal field happens to be uh with uh english writing literature uh, I minored in political science, so it's not as not as uh, deep into the STEM fields. But my point here is that in all of the fields and industries that we uh, partake in today, uh, we're the next generation and we're here to fill in the shoes of the previous one. And given that this show is about bridging the gaps between our generation and yours at home, um, it's important to talk about the expectations that we have you know that we need to 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 meet uh especially when when we're taking all of the tasks that were previously done by by those that came before us and something that is really really important to to bring up at the forefront of a conversation like that is that a lot of people and and Brianna can attest to this I can attest to this we've seen more or less that there is this sort of stigma that the generation of today is considered to be lazy so a lot of people will say that we're not as hard working um that we have a lot of expectations for things to be given to us um that weren't given to you know our our forefathers um and that we take a lot of things for granted and that's a very very broad concept and there's a lot of ways to break that down but if I wanted to get your thoughts on that before we move yeah. forward. Yeah. And I think, um, yeah, we definitely really got into this the other day, but um, I think that there's, I, I don't even know that I would label it a misconception because I definitely don't think that everyone 
thinks that our generation is lazy. It's definitely a label that's been put on us, not to call it a label, but I mean, uh, it's definitely something that the older generation typically thinks of us. And I think that maybe um, lazy is uh, ill-defined in a sense, because I think um, we're just less conventional in the ways that we choose to like prioritize or like pursue different uh, passions and stuff like that, which is a lot of what our generation does nowadays. I think um, maybe the main reason that we're labeled as lazy is because um, we don't, a lot of people don't, especially our age, there are a lot of people who are in um, certain fields or like who are entrepreneurs who didn't go to school or didn't do this or didn't do that. And they didn't put all of that work in to go and get an extra degree or something like that. And I think that um, that's something that people may, might think is um, is lazy. But I feel like also it's kind of maximizing your time. It's kind of like working smarter, not harder, which is something that I mentioned. But I mean, um, I think work smarter, not harder is the <laughs> the motto of our generation. Yeah. I think that there's a lot of people out there um, and I, I happen to agree, but um, I don't think everyone needs to go to college. There's a lot of stuff that you can do without going there. And then there's also the whole um, loans and not being able to afford college and all of that stuff. And the fact that just as this episode is titled, a lot of times with our own education, we're required to teach ourselves, even if we're in college, even if we have professors who are supposed to be doing that. Um, a lot of the times that's not how it is. We're expected to teach ourselves and then um, just get through. I feel like we're paying for the degree, not necessarily um, the education, because I feel like a lot of the times we're providing that ourselves. But school's just not not for everyone. I mean, it, that's obviously not true for me, considering I want to spend another several years in school. <laughs> um, but I like going to school. There are a lot of people. My younger brother is not the same. He's not the same. He doesn't like school and he likes to learn, but I just don't think he likes the format of school, um, which is another conversation. I mean, right. the whole um, how the education system is structured. But um, there's yeah, just no, some people who don't fit into that kind of system, I think. Yeah, it's it's I think it's the other thing that's important to mention is that, you know, when when we say when we say the word lazy or or, you know, work smarter, not harder and we we're talking about you know a generation of people us that we're living in an increasingly digital world you know it's it's a lot of us spend more time in our rooms uh, on our phones on digital devices computers ipads phones themselves social media video games all we're talking about all the stuff that for the most part puts us in a in a position where it doesn't look like we're that active or that we're not uh, out there uh, in the world and and getting getting our our work done and and stuff like that and and a lot of the times it is it it is uh, uh, our fault you know uh, it's it's we're not we're not throwing away blame you know because no. it's important to to mention that um, some of the faults that we have uh, do do. Uh, contribute to that but it's also important to mention that the culture that we're growing up in kind of I don't I don't I want to be careful with my words here that it, it creates an atmosphere where effort doesn't necessarily equate to success and what I mean by that is we're living in an education system that I can confidently say that I don't think anyone likes very much there's uh, the education in in the united states leaves a lot to be desired um in some states it's better than others um but most of the time what happens is is that teachers are are hired and fired based on how well they teach and the only measurement that they have and this is something that i have a problem with that i think can be can be shifted the only measurement for that is the grades that the students in that professor or teacher's class is getting. And the side effect of that is that teachers that prioritize their job, that want to be able to keep their job, will inflate their grades. They'll give out a lot of extra credit to students to make sure that they don't that they pass, or that they don't fail. And in order to, you know, make themselves look better, will be extremely generous towards kids. And other teachers aren't the same. 
and there's teaching methods that vary between one teacher to the next. And I think that it this destabilizes the system and it makes it harder for students to adapt because, you know, from from one teacher, you might get one good teacher, you might get one bad teacher. And then all of a sudden you don't re, you don't know if it's you, if it's them. And and some teachers are really bad. Some teachers yeah. are so bad that a lot of the material and this is something that you that you mentioned, a lot of the material ends up being taught to us by ourselves. We need to sit down with the textbook and we need to teach ourselves the material in order to pass the test, in order to pass the class. And it's, I think because it's becoming increasingly difficult, more and more of our time gets sucked into things that we're required to do, not into things that we necessarily want to do. And it, I think, hurts us in the sense that it takes us longer for us to find out what it is that we want to do with our lives. You know, it's like, by the time I'm done doing homework at home, the next thing that I'm thinking about is I need some time to relax. I need some time to unwind. I've been at this for 10 hours, you know, and I just want to relax a little bit. And that's, I think, where a lot of the image comes from. You know, when you say you want to be lazy, it's that a lot of our free time, whenever we have it, we use it to unwind, to relax, to de-stress and decompress. Yeah. And and I think it, it contributes to... Uh, later issues that that end up coming up when we do end up having to get our act together when we're in college and and eventually now yeah. we're graduating and in grad school. I think also um, not to go back uh, so much, but um, I think a huge difference too um, in defining um, our generation is lazy. I think is the fact that there's very different opportunities now um, for jobs in a sense that these jobs were not necessary um, 50 years ago, obviously, because as you said, with technology and um, now even there's social media managers, which really wasn't a thing um, before this whole like technology boom. And like um, a lot of our generation studies that they studied that um, we have a friend who is in social media marketing and um, I feel like that's a newer area and I, I don't think that a lot of people understand what that entails. I think a lot of it is understanding. It's very much marketing in um, in just a newer sense because um, and they work hard. Let me tell you, because I um, I don't know. I don't know how many of you guys are familiar with TikTok, um, but whoever is running the Duolingo TikTok, the social media manager for Duolingo deserves a raise because they are doing an <laughs> outstanding job. They are making several TikToks a day and they're hilarious. And a lot of it is, it's a lot of content creation, which is what our generation is very good at. But I think also there's a bunch of people on YouTube and, and, and TikTok and all of that who that's their job. Yeah. And they're very good at what they do. They provide entertainment. It's just not in a very traditional sense because they're not, let's say, like an actor or something like that. So I think that's also and a lot of those people work from home, which is maybe also where the sense of like lazy comes from, because they don't they're not like working a nine to five. It's very non-traditional. But I think that um, I think that that's also kind of where that comes from, which yeah. is very different. But um, I, th I think I think you actually you bring up a really, really good point for those of you at home that do not know what Duolingo is. They are a, a language service. Um, it's you know, it's an app that you can download so that you can learn a new language and it they send you notifications and they you have to do quizzes and, and they try to turn it into a little bit of a game and make it entertaining to try to learn a new language. And what they're trying to appeal to is the younger audience, you know, to to our generation. And oftentimes the way to do that nowadays is to be present on social media, which gives rise to this job, to the social media yeah. uh, marketing job. You know, it, it, you need to be specialized in this kind of work because you have to understand how to navigate those kinds of digital spaces. And it's so time consuming now that you can be paid full time to to do something like that. It's that's how uh, developed you know, this, this new, um, platform, this new mode of, of communication and, and connection, uh, that's how developed it's become. Um, yeah, no, it's, it's, it's a really, really good point. And I think the, the reason why so much non-conventional or untraditional, um, methods of reaching out to people is, is kind of creating this new form of, 
you know, communicating and, and the way that we grow up is because of the fact that nowadays, because it, it speeds up is, is what I'm trying to say. It speeds up the amount of information that we're getting. And I, you mentioned this in prep time yeah. that like too 100%. much information is a bad thing. And, and this was something that I brought up earlier um, that I think it's super important to understand that a lot of people, and I mean, and when I say a lot, this is, I'm probably thinking about the ballpark of like, you know, 99% of people in our generation go through what I like to call analysis paralysis, which is we have so many different options out to us. You know, we, uh, we could do this, we could do that. And we spent all of our time during school. And then in our free time, we're trying to relax and de-stress and, and recuperate uh, and recover and for, get ready for the next day. And then all of a sudden we're in college and we have to decide what career we want to go into. And now we have to start answering big questions about our lives. And we've had very, very little time to think about it. And we have so many options laid out before us that, that we're so stuck in trying to figure out which one's the right decision that, you know, we get stuck trying to analyze it and, and we don't know which direction we need to go. And, uh, and I think that that's, that's also an important thing to bring up because that contributes also to us not wanting to go out and do anything because it's, we don't know what it is that we want to go out and do, you know, once we figure it out, then, then we can start putting our best foot forward. But until then, you know, we're stuck trying to, you know, learn about what we're passionate about and what, what we could make a living out of, uh, what we could try to, um, you know, spend a lot of money on, you know, college is, is not, is getting more, more and more and more expensive. Um, and so it's very costly to, make that kind of decision and if we make the wrong one then all of that effort that you put in in college and grad school and and if you're going back to school you know it's you gotta you gotta do it all over again and and that's why analysis paralysis becomes a serious serious problem um and i i don't want to run out on our on our time here today um but i think it's important to mention that what i think the older generation, what our parents, what our grandparents could definitely take away from this is it's important that your son, your daughter, your grandchildren understand that while you love them very much, that they know that they're not always going to be perfect. Because when we grow up and we receive all of this you know, attention from, from our parents and they have all these expectations that we're going to go on, we're going to become great in our careers and, and whatnot. And, and what happens when we go out and we do those things and we stumble and we fall, you know, which is inevitable. Um, we, it takes us a while for us to figure out that it's okay for us to fail. You know, oftentimes when we mess up, we feel ashamed and we don't want to appear uh fallible you know to our parents and grandparents that have devoted so much time attention and money into making sure that that we succeed and and i think that that's an important takeaway from um the world that we live in nowadays you know there's so much that we're also figuring out you know we we don't know everything yet uh as as we're very often reminded of but um it's important to understand that that we we need to learn to be all right with with messing up every now and again i yeah i agree i think um actually what i was thinking of when you said that is um i think that a big miscommunication also um between like intergenerationally um is i think there's a with all of the pressure that's put on us to make a lot of decisions it almost enhances that sense of analysis paralysis so like we have all of this pressure put on us to not fail and to be perfect and to accomplish all of these things. But at the same time, we don't know what we want to accomplish yet. And we obviously cannot accomplish, like I cannot win a Nobel Peace Prize and this and that, and I can't be an all-star NBA player. I I mean, I would never be an all-star NBA <laughs> player, but um, 
but there's just so many different things that you can do, especially now with, like we said, the rise of like different jobs and different opportunities. There's so many things that you can do. And I think that um, we're pushed to be great, but we're not pushed to learn what we would be great doing, which is, I know what my, I switch majors in my undergrad because I didn't know what I wanted to do. I didn't know what I was good at. I thought when I was younger that I was going to be good at everything that later turned out to be false. Um, and I feel like we need to do a better job of helping each other figure out what we're good at um, and pursuing those things as opposed to um, trying to be good at everything. Um, it's, it's difficult when you have your parents and your grandparents and everyone telling you that you're going to be so great, but no one really knows what you're good at. They just think you're good at everything because then they're like, well, you can do whatever you want. And you're like, I don't know what I want to do. Um, that was my problem. And I still, I'm still like that. I feel like I could, I could do most things and be happy, but maybe that's just the people pleaser in me. I think we need to maybe have more of a conversation about pe what people are good at and helping people find their way as opposed to just saying like oh you're gonna do great because sometimes that's not necessarily the most helpful thing yeah De <laughs> devoting devoting time to to figuring yourself out is is definitely really important and i and I helping others figure themselves out that yes is a big part of it too because you can't do it alone you can't people need people mm -hmm. and i i think the 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 important part that you brought up was learning what it is that you're good at you know, I figured that out when I was, you know, in middle school, I always wanted to be a writer, I always wanted to do something in the field of writing. And that's great. And and I stuck with it. And I went all the way through college. And, and I'm happy with the choice that I made, but not everyone is the same way. You know, it's, it's important to understand that while we do need others, that it's okay not to compare yourself to to everyone else, everyone is is different there are uh ways for everyone to work there's different ways for us to learn you know it's this is something that we figure out when we're teaching ourselves uh, a lot of the college material we figure out the yeah. best ways to teach ourselves things uh, some of us use index cards um uh, a lot of us are very visual others are you know much more repetition they like repetition type type of learning um and i think that that's all part of uh of of what it takes to to grow up and and a lot of us even now i mean you, you we would like to believe that we've figured it all out and unfortunately uh no matter how old you get that's never going to be the case and and it takes a while to 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 swallow that pill um but now as as we're, we're wrapping up the show here uh i do want to leave you all with a a spotlight of the week um the movie dune recently came out we had a picture here of a screenshot from the movie uh it is a spectacular spectacular film brie have you seen it yet i haven't seen it yet you i you have to go to the movie I, theaters i'm I, trying to decide if i should read the book first the, okay first of all for <laughs> you folks at home the book was published uh in 1965 um and it is huge that's why they're splitting the movie into into multiple parts. This first Dune movie is part one, um, and it is already it's about two and a half hours long. It is a trek, but it is so so very worth it. The music was composed by Hans Zimmer, who did movies like Inception. Um, no. Did they, he also did a lot of classic Disney films, um, and uh, in addition to that, I think Interstellar was another movie that he did. Uh, he did a lot of spectacular music scores. The sound design in the movie is great. The set design in the movie is great. Absolutely spectacular. And the image that you just saw there with that giant worm, it was, <laughs> it is everything. It's a completely new world. It's science fiction. But even if you're not a science fiction fan, I'm not that big in Star Wars or Star Trek. Are you? Yeah. You are? Yes. Okay. Then you, okay. You definitely need to watch it then. So I wasn't that big know. of a fan. I, I kind of, you know, always watched it from afar, but. I'm a huge, huge fan of this Dune movie. You've got to watch it. It is PG-13, so you know maybe don't take your six-year-old to see it. But uh, if if you're you know in the older you know in your teens and and twenties and stuff, and you want to see it with your kids, 
Uh, I 100% recommend going for it. It is an adventure. Um, that said, uh, this is Brianna Bailey and Andres Pena signing off from a Honey, What Are the Kids Thinking show. We'll be back next week, hopefully, if my publisher has decided not to ax the show. If you don't want it to be axed, feel free to comment about what should not or should go with cheese or just like the show uh, and comment how much you like it. And if you have any ideas or comments about what you want me to cover next, feel free to drop that in the comments as well. Have a wonderful week and we'll see you next time.